morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever and whenever you are. My name is Benjamin. My name is Caleb. And welcome to the first devlog for our game Monster Pack. Monster Pack is a monster training RPG without the slow-paced grind of other traditional RPGs. Caleb here is actually going to be leaving soon, so we decided to do a challenge where we would take two months and kind of like a game in a game jam format, you know, instead of having three days or a week, we would have two months and try and make it, this game as quickly as possible, scope it appropriately for those two months, market it and sell it on itch.io. On Monday, Monday afternoon actually, we, we just printed off a calendar at first and drew onto that calendar. May, June, July. So this is actually the calendar we had. We put in a bunch of stuff on here. Yeah, so we got that calendar and I introduced Caleb to Trello because he hadn't used it before. And we started breaking down the different tasks in the calendar. And we discovered that there's actually a calendar in Trello. Didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know that. I've been using it for a while. It's a really nice calendar too. Yeah, it's super <laughs> useful. And we can drag stuff around in the calendar and easily adjust. So that was really helpful to have that calendar. So on the project, I'm going to be doing the programming and the artwork game development or the game design side as well. And Caleb's going to be doing... I'm doing project management, and so I kind of uh, go through and separate all the tasks and put due dates on them. And I'm also in charge of the game audio, so sound effects and music. I'm also working on a lot of the marketing. So with the marketing, um, obviously we're both involved with the marketing, but I've been kind of um, doing the writing for it, so I have an outline of the marketing. He's kind of been in charge of coming up with a core message, like what what exactly is this game, right? There's like our pitch and we're going to be refining that and stuff, but coming up with some different phrases and stuff that help define the game and differentiate it from the Pokemon games or other monster catching games that kind of, that follow a formula similar to Pokemon. We want to branch away from that formula. And these sentences and these phrases help tell interested customers how we're different from Pokemon. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to go ahead and read a few of them that I wrote. Here's one. Be cautious not to let your little monster die. In the world of monsters, it's kill or be killed. And that, that message kind of hints at the fact that in this game, it's a little bit darker than, than in the Pokemon games. In Pokemon, if your monster faints, right, you just take them to the Pokemon Center and heal them. And in this game, that's not the case. When your monster dies, they're gone forever. Part of what we want our players to feel is a connection to these creatures, but then a real sense of loss. And that sense of loss, I think, is important uh, to the vision that we have for this game. Mm -hmm. And uh, to comfort the players, we have a phrase that we like to use, all monsters go to heaven. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> whether or not we keep that in the final, <laughs> in the final marketing stuff, we think it's a funny phrase and we decided to write it down. So feel the Russian battle, things happen fast. The fights are the story, not the words. Kind of what we're getting at that there is with our, with our current pitch of the game, which is a monster training game without the slow paced grind. In a lot of RPGs, there's a lot of dialogue and we don't really want to have very much dialogue in our game because we feel like it just slows down the RPG elements of building your team and, and making them stronger and working on your strategy, stuff like that. Yeah, this sentence brings in, uh, in some design decisions that we're focusing on, right? We want, the, we want the players to focus on the strategies of the battle and not necessarily the grind. We actually talk about this a little bit later, but I invented this wizard formula, which is basically just de determining how much damage is dealt based on different factors like, you know, their stats and their levels. And we've set it up so that level affects the battles significantly less 
So there is a difference as you train your monster, it does become stronger, but that difference is minimal. You could take a really low leveled creature monster and still win a battle with a stronger one, potentially if you played the battle smartly. You know, we want the players to be able to create their own story. We don't want to feed them a specific story that they have to go through. And that's, that's partially because that's the kind of story that I tend to enjoy the most. One where it's like, it's unique to you and your experience with that game. Nobody else had that exact story. And you can share it with other people who have played the game and it's not the same. It doesn't give them spoilers, you know. Focusing on that side, like I said, one of the reasons is because I like that kind of story, but the other reason is that it scopes the project down again. Once again, we're on a time limit here and that helps us to bring the scope of the project down. Yeah, that way we don't have to worry about writing a story really or anything. We can just create the systems that are necessary to have players have their own stories. Um, that kind of reminds me of how Faster Than Light is built. Yeah. Because Faster Than Light is a lot like that where every time you play the game, stuff happens that just you you just like would never have predicted or never have thought up of. Yeah. And you can tell that story. I remember when we were playing FTL a lot. Um, we could, we would tell each other stories. Oh, like my ship caught on fire and there was the slug captain or whatever. Yeah. There's lots of stories that just emerge out of the system of the game. Yeah, I agree. This phrase, uh, the last one we'll mention, starting anew gives you the opportunity to try things differently. With this game, for instance, when you lose all of your monsters, that will be game over. And so because of that, that means that there has to be a lot of replay value in, into the game so that it's fun to start over and to try a new strategy and to see how it works. Yeah, and this decision stems a little bit from what I like about the Pokemon games, right? Because that they're a heavy influence, obviously, for us. And one of my favorite things to do is to start a brand new game, right? Picking your starter, coming up with a new team, that kind of experience right there at the start of the game is really fun. And the game gets less engaging for me as I get farther and farther into it. That's one of the decisions that we made too, is we want starting over to feel meaningful to the player and to be part of the experience, you know? It's not game over isn't the end of the game. Like you start over, and you get to experience the best parts of the game all over again. In fact, it might even be a good idea to not even have a game over screen, but like a try again screen, you know? <laughs> Your monsters went to heaven, try again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> After I started programming, got some of the battle systems in and stuff, I got, I, I, I've taken a data oriented there approach to making this game. If you look at stuff like MVC, uh, you know, model view controller, it's a common system used in websites and such. I'm using something similar for our game. And um, so I've been able to implement that into the battle system. It's been easy to work with and I've enjoyed using that type of structure. But once I kind of got that down, got the basics for our battle system in and they still need a lot of polish, but the basics are there, the damage, everything works, the turns, I started working on an overworld mock-up and how our character is going to move around in the world. And we had kind of a difficult problem that came with that, which was, do we use the same grid, grid lock that the original Pokemon games use? They lock the player into a grid and you can't move outside of that grid. You know, if you move over, you're going to go over 16 pixels and your character can't move in between there. And we ultimately decided to branch out of that again. It's another area where we're moving away from po the Pokemon games and allow our character to move freely in all the different directions. That created new problems for us. So one of the problems that came up with that was how we're going to do the encounters because in the original games, if you move over a piece of grass, right, then it did, then it, you have a probability of running into a monster and now we don't have that specific grid, so we just have to have an area that you move in and create a probability there. So we're gonna to have to figure out how to solve that. I don't know how I'm going to solve that yet. That's actually going to be something that I work on some next week. Mm -hmm. 
So we talked a little bit earlier about the wizard formula. This is just how we detect battles or how we detect damage done in a battle. I used a website that's like a graphing calculator and I was able to put in some different variables that represented certain elements and, and graph that out on a graph, which is super nerdy. Mm -hmm. And it took me forever while I was messing around with the variables. I'm sure there's an algebraic way to break this down better than what I had. <laughs> you know, maybe creating sub formulas for different variables. That's probably what I need to do, but I didn't do that. I just kept fiddling with the numbers until I got something that worked. It was nice because I had the defense stat of, I had the defense stat of the opposing creature, the opposing monster be the X axis and the damage output be the Y axis. So that I could easily see what the damage would be based on their defense and have the attack and level and everything else that goes into that formula, not actually graphed, but still in the formula so I could manipulate those values. And it was interesting to see how that worked and mess around with that. I'm excited to learn more about that as I go into the leveling system and what the experience graph is going to look like and potentially share some of my findings with you guys as well. We made a lot of progress this week. We're excited for the stuff that we did. We made, we're ahead of schedule currently on our calendar. That's good. That's a good feeling that we're ahead of schedule. We're probably going to run into stuff that will put us behind. So being ahead initially is, is a good thing, I think. Yeah. So that we can try and make this work. For next week, I'm going to be focusing on the overworld systems like dialogue and stuff like that. Also, the encounters, the encounters and polishing up the battles. Currently, they're pretty static. It actually works how it's supposed to. You have a party, everything saves, your monsters can die and not go, you won't have them in battle anymore. All of that stuff works, but there's no polish associated with it. It feels really stale and lifeless. So I'm gonna be working on that next week as well. And next week, I'm going to be working on, first of all, I'm gonna start on the sound effects. So I already made an outline for that. But I'm pretty new to making sound effects, so I'm giving myself a solid week to really try to refine the sound effects. Then I'm going to rewrite the tracks that I wrote this week and try to make all of them have a more cohesive style that's unique to the identity of the game. Also, sharpen up the marketing verbiage. So, thank you for watching our indie devlog. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you learned something from it. If you did, give it a like. Leave us a comment if you have any feedback for us. We'll be making another one for next week to keep you all in the loop about our game. For now, there will be a sign-up page in the description and in the comments where you can sign up for our email list. If you'd like to be notified, send us your, send us your trainer application if you're interested in following this game, and uh, we will talk to you all later.